Okay, so as I mentioned before, the first demo is the Echo demo. And what we do for that is we first start the computer by turning it on and pressing reset and then start to get into the monitor program. So there's reset and there's start. And so there's my prompt. And so now I will, yeah, I will proceed to enter this code. And as I said, it can start anywhere. So let's pick a number at random. 17. No. 1, 2, 3, 4. Why not? Okay, that's got something in it, but that is 63610. 63610. Line feed automatically opens the next location. That wants a 777. Line feed 60610. Line feed 63511. Line feed 777. Line feed. Six one 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 line feed seven seven two return. All right, there's my program. So now to run that, I say I give the starting address one two three four and say G four go, and it doesn't appear to be doing anything. But <laughs> if I start typing. Let's see, what shall I type? Oops. Notice, notice I have to press line feed because the carriage return just sends a carriage return character. And so there's no automatic line feed. Okay. So there, there is that. Um, and, I, and I made a mistake. I typed an O instead of a P there. So um, I backspaced, which doesn't work on a printing terminal. That's supposed to say pudding. Nick Jones nicked my pudding. Okay. Um, and that's it for that demo. That's, that's all there is. Uh, but it's nice and short and simple. And uh, lets you see how you can enter code and and execute it. Okay. Uh, there is a. Oh wait. Let's reset again. I said, let's reset again. Okay. Go back to the monitor. There is a help command. which tells you what you can do, or most of what you can do. So, well, Boot from hard drive, that's not implemented. Load program from TTY in, we're not going to use that one for this demo. Uh, load program from paper tape reader, yeah, we will be doing that shortly. But for this last demo, uh, we used address G for go, start execution, and slash examine location, and then uh, return to close, line feed to close, and open the next location. Okay, so that was demo number one. Demo number two, trap. So let's go over here and we'll uh, select trap, which is number one. And you can see that's actually currently selected, but you see the uh, LED display here? 
which shows you which one's selected, as well as, you know, the, the button that happens to be pushed in. <laughs> uh, but these are, these are numbered, uh, and I don't know if you can see it because of the angle, but these, these ROMs are numbered, so you can match that with that. Okay, so that says trap, number one. We load it into the reader, you see, load it into the reader, and then we type R over here, and that will read it in, and it's done. Now, all of these demo programs start at location 1000. These are octal values, by the way, that I'm using. Um, so, 1000 octal. So, I'll start at 1000G, and I expect it to say, hello world, and it does nothing. Well, that's odd. Now, fortunately, there is the code. <clears throat> fortunately, I had the foresight, you see. Uh, to put a trap instruction in there right after it starts up. So I'm going to go in and uh, uh, enable traps. So I type T. Trap handler is disabled. Enable, yes. Okay. And so now I'll restart it. Try again at one, location 1000. And boom, it has hit the trap at location 1010. It shows me the values of the registers at this point. And uh, what I can now do is, okay, I'm at location 1010. I'm going to look at the code. And as I mentioned previously, there's a disassembler built in. So to get to that, I press, uh, on an open location, I press semicolon, and that will disassemble that location. That says trap. Okay, that's good. That's where I stopped. And so we'll look at the next few instructions. It's loading. Okay, so AC2 has 1033. It's loading accumulator 0 with uh, the value in that location. Let's see. Loads location 1 with something else. Ands them. Okay. Oh, so that's a mask. Okay, I can see that's going on. Okay. And, okay, so and. Okay, so what this is doing is it's checking for end of string. End of string is indicated by a null character. So this uh, load accumulator 1 with dot plus 17. Dot plus 17 is a byte mask. Um, and then and that with the value that we picked up. Uh, that was pointed to by accumulator 2 and skip on zero result. And so that says if it's non-zero, it will return. And if it's zero, then that's backwards. I want to return if it's zero. So that should be SNR, skip non-zero return. I happen to know that that's, uh, that that's a 5 in the last digit here. So if I go back to location 1013, and that has 123404, oh, and I make it 123405, oh, okay, and we'll re-examine that. Okay, so you see I went from skip on zero result to skip on non-zero result. Okay, so I think that that is going to fix it. I'm going to turn traps off. Disable it, and we'll go 1,000, go. And it says, hello world, and returns to the uh, monitor. So that's that demo. Now, you might be thinking, well, gee, does that mean that the monitor is a full-blown debugger, you know, at this point? And no, it's not, because you have to put the traps in yourself. Now, you could put a trap, you could overwrite an instruction with a trap. Um, but normally in a debugger, when you set a breakpoint, you set a breakpoint on an instruction, and then when you proceed, that instruction will then get executed. And it doesn't have the ability right now to do that. So um, it's, it's kind of manual. But... 
it helps. Okay. Next demo is the game of life. And that is number four here. So I'm going to select number four. And I'm going to read that in. And it's read in. And now I have to readjust the camera. Okay, so from now on, camera two will be on the display because everything else uses the graphics display. And you've seen how the paper tape reader emulator works. So you can trust me on that when I select different, uh, different options. Uh, so again, it starts at location 1000. And you see it cleared the screen. And here it says enter starting pattern. One COVID two. Let's get that up to where you can read it. One COVID two rat three rabbits four noise. COVID is the one I I, I did last year. Um, okay, and so <laughs> that's just the starting pattern, and it will then run the game of life on that. Uh, the 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 outline is not included. Uh, so the outline will stay as is, but everything within those borders is uh, is playing the game of life. And there you see it did a generation. It takes about oh, 20 seconds per generation or so. Um, I have the ability here to press escape to go and select a different starting pattern. But it only checks that at the uh, beginning of a new generation. So, okay, here we are. My favorite is noise, which just fills uh, memory with random, fills the, uh, the display memory with random bits. And so we'll use that as a starting point and then uh, it, uh, it's rather chaotic to begin with, but then things very quickly sort of start to settle into interesting patterns. Um, we'll, go, we'll go one more generation here just for fun. Okay. Um, next. clock is uh, number two, so I'm going to select number two over here, press the blue button, and read it in. And we're going to say go. Okay, and it's asking for the current time. I don't know what time it is here. I don't know what time it is where you are. Uh, but just to show the, the chiming, I am going to put it at 11, uh, 59... 50. And so in 10 seconds, we'll get uh, eight bells. Okay, so here's the clock. You can see there's the seconds ticking off here. Uh, it's 57, 58, 59. Okay, and that's uh, that's the chimes. That's how it works. It's, it, it, it's, it's in pairs. Uh, if there's an odd number, then that'll be the last one. It'll be a single a single one, but pairs with a delay between them, and that just makes it easy, uh, easier to count um, in your head without thinking about it. Uh, and uh, so there you go. This, this, as I said, Star Trek themed, this is, shall we say, reminiscent of the um, displays in sickbay in the original Star Trek series, okay, which is why I did it that way. Um, something else I don't know if you noticed uh, is that while it was chiming, the clock continued to update, and that's because it's interrupt-driven and time-sliced, and it isn't strictly polling, uh, you know, on the... Uh, uh, on one thing or the other. There's essentially two tasks running here. One is one is the clock updating the screen and the other would be the sound program. Uh, and uh, so the sound task, whatever. So, and, and we'll see an example 
in the Star Trek game of where that uh, isn't the case. Because, again, there's no, no interrupts, there's no time slicing in the Star Trek game. This is a slow terminal. So terminal output and screen update are two separate tests, but they're done serially. And, it, and it's annoying, but it's the way things were kind of back in the day. Or the way things might be, you know, might have been in, 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 some, in some instances um, before people figured out how to do real time. <laughs> Time slicing and preemptive scheduling and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, that's your shift clock. We'd have to sit here for half an hour or I'd have to restart it to, uh, to, to show it chiming again. So I could do, I could do just to do it. Um, just to do it, I'll go. Uh, I'll do two... 2950. So this would be 230. So how many bells is that? I think that's five bells. Whoops, there's a glitch. I don't know what's, what that's all about. Oh, that belongs over there. There you go, five bells. Okay. And uh, some obvious uh, bug. Hey, this is uh, all still a work in progress. Okay, final demo. Let's go, Star Trek. Star Trek is number three. Tape. Tape, virtual tape number three. I'm going to read it in. Remember, it's that big. <laughs> and we'll start it. Press any key to, re, uh, to begin new game. Okay, where's the any key? I don't see it. Okay, you can see it's uh, printing, 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 and now it's finally gotten around to uh, doing something on the screen, clearing it at least, and it's printing more, and uh, then the screen, oh, okay, press return when ready, okay, to assume command, okay, there, and now we'll see the screen, well, <laughs> after it finishes printing, we'll see the screen update. See, ideally, the screen would, would be active right now, instead of blank as it is. Okay, it's, uh, it's done a short-range scan. It's given me the, the start of the game. There are uh, eight Klingons, five star bases. Uh, the commands are here. Okay, and so here's my screen. This is my short-range scan. This is my cumulative galactic record. This is my uh, system status, health. Everything's healthy at this point. Current star date, condition, green, yellow, red. The quadrant I'm in, the sector within the quadrant. So this is the quadrant. This is the sector within the quadrant. Total energy, shield level, number of photon torpedoes I have. Here's a little compass uh, for directions when uh, navigating or firing photon torpedoes. And here it identifies the, uh, the name of the ship because there was a little bit of space left over on the screen. I tried to cram as much as I could on there. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is a long-range scan, see what's going on around me. And the long-range scan is going to show one... Uh, there you go one uh, quadrant around me, uh, around my, my current quadrant. Uh, okay, so there's a Klingon there and there's a Klingon there. So let's go 
We can't go straight down because there's a star in the way. So let's go to this one. Um, first, I'm going to put the shields up. Oh, notice the long range scan also printed here. Um, and that actually gave me more information than is on here because that showed me how many stars are in there and if there's a star base as well. So the first digit is the number of Klingons, the second digit is the number of star bases, and the third digit is the number of stars. So the one we're going to, which as you see, it will be in uh, direction six from where we are, it has one Klingon and seven stars. Let's find out. Navigate. Course. Six. Now this will take um, integers or, or one decimal point. So I could do 6.2, 6.3, but um, I don't need to for this. So six. Uh, so the, yeah, the, the arithmetic in this program, uh, the original basic code, of course, basic has floating point, and so it used floating point. This doesn't have floating point, and I didn't want to implement it for this demo, so I implemented fixed point arithmetic to one decimal place. Okay, so you can see, there I am, there's a Klingon, okay, and that doesn't, I know that looks more like a Romulan, you know, warbird than a Klingon warship, but uh, Klingon ships probably from the top look a lot like the Enterprise. <laughs> um, that's what we get. Um, okay. I'm going to do a long range scan. Long range scan is free. Uh, he won't shoot at me if I do a long range scan, but I just want to see what else is around us here. Okay, so I have to run away, you know. Okay, there's nothing. No starbase, nothing. Okay. I think I can get him with a photon torpedo. So I can use the computer for that to, to, to compute the, uh, the direction. Because, um, see, that's direction 5, and that's direction six, so it's somewhere in between. Uh, but COM2, I believe, will show me direction. There we go. 5.5. .5, okay, and the distance is 2.2. Well, I don't care really about the distance. And at this point, if there's multiple Klingons, I care about the distance because I probably want to uh, shoot at the, f the closest one first. Uh, so I'm going to fire a torpedo. Direction, torpedo course, 5.5. And uh, it's showing me the torpedo track. I have destroyed the Klingon. It reports that here. And you can see he's disappeared from the screen. So now we would move over to this guy. So, because there's nothing blocking us. So we'll go nav. Course one, warp one. The warp factor is just the number of uh, quadrants you, you traverse. So you can go up to warp eight, provided your warp drive is working. See so engines here. Warp drives can become damaged, uh, sensors can become damaged. If the, and the computer can become damaged. If the computer becomes damaged, this screen goes blank. <laughs> okay, there he is. Uh, I don't know if I can get him with the torpedo because that star's kind of in the way. I'm gonna I'm gonna fire the phasers uh, on this one. Phasers automatically lock on the target. Okay, energy available equals nine sixty two. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do 162. See what that does. 220 unit hit and I destroyed him. Okay, because two it takes 200 units to destroy a uh, a Klingon. Okay, so I can do a long range scan just to see what's there. Again, those are those are free in terms of time and energy and there's nothing of interest there so let me go this way one two three four five six seven eight 
two, three. Okay. Warp three should put me here. If it ever finishes printing. Okay, yeah, I'm there. So now I can do a long range scan and it'll pick up all of the all of the things around me here. How terribly uninteresting. Hmm. So what's what's left? Com one, I think, shows me. Yeah, status report. Six Klingons left, 27 star dates, five star bases. We haven't found a star base yet. Okay, and then it's showing me state of repair of all of my systems, which I also see here. Um, so I want to find a star base just to show Doggy. I'm, I'm not going to run this to completion because this video is already plenty long enough. Uh, so let's go, I can't go south. I am going to go over one. No, can I go up this way? Okay. Let me go up here, and, that, and then I can do a, pick up these guys with a long-range scan. So if I, direction two. Nav, course two. One. Short-range sensors are damaged. Okay, so there you can see. The short-range sensors are out. I can still do long-range. Here's my, here's my indicator here of their health. And to fix them, I either have to move or I have to get to a starbase, and the starbase can repair it. Uh, just, I, can't, I can't just sit. And, and wait for them to repair. That's something that could be added to the game, but uh, isn't there right now. Okay, there's a couple of Klingons there. I probably want to avoid them with my short-range sensors out. So let me go down. One, two, three. I, and I don't know that there isn't a star there. Nav, direction seven. Three. They're still out, but uh, they have imp health has improved because uh, Scotty's been working on them. I still haven't found a star base. Well, I'll keep going. I'm trying to go here. Okay. So now my engines, warp engines are damaged. I also ran into a star. Uh, some slight repair on the short range, but I still don't have a short range scan. I know there's a star directly below me, uh, but my warp engines are damaged, and that means I can only go on impulse power. So I'm going to go, uh, let's see, go direction 5, and I can only go warp point 3. But this may be enough to get my short-range scanners back. Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maximum speed is warp 2. Nav 5 Point two. Whoops. All right. Lieutenant Sulu reports incorrect course data, sir. It it, it wanted uh, yeah okay. It wanted the course and uh, word factor. Uh, it didn't go back to the command prompt. So I'm gonna go back to the command. It's now back in the command prompt. Five. Point two. Okay, 
Watch this now. Yay, my short range sensors are back. There's a lot of stars there. Um, my warp engines are still damaged. I can go into the next, I can go into this guy with a point two. Nav five point two. Uh, engines continue to be worked on. But I don't think they'll be repaired yet. Oh, it's a long way across. across yeah, so I went. Oh, point two. Oh, no, I entered the. Okay, I entered it. Yeah. I need a long range scan. I still don't see a star base. What is going on? <laughs> now, it said there were five star bases. You'd think I'd have seen one by now. Uh, I'm going to have seven. I'm going to limp along. I'm determined to find a star base, just so you can see what star bases look like. Okay, warp engines are uh, now repaired. Yay. Um, nav seven warp two. Okay. Shield control damaged. Now that means not the shields are down, but I can't change the shields. I so. My shields are in fine shape, um, but I can't make any adjustments to them at this time. There, there's a couple of star bases, okay? That's what star bases look like. The, uh, the value is circled, okay? So let me go down. Nav. Or seven. I'll go point five. That should put us well into that quadrant, and we'll find the star base, and we'll dock at it, and then I'll probably end the demo there. Okay. So there's the star base. There you can see this is what it looks like here on the printed screen. Uh, there's a there's a computer command to tell me how to get to the star base. That's com three, I think. From Enterprise to star base, direction six point five, distance four point four. That's four point four sectors. You got to be careful, not quadrants. So I will go now. And, and by the way, uh, this is, there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, sectors in a quadrant, not 10. Okay. Um, now, direction 6.5. And I'm going to go 0.5. I'm going to run right into it. Shield control damaged. Oh, it got even worse. Okay, engine shut down due to bad navigation. Shields dropped for docking purposes. So I made it to the starbase. I'm docked. Um, so at this point, I can do a damage report. And they will offer to repair the damage for me. Point six star dates through yes. So watch this now. Zip, everything's repaired. Okay. Now one last thing I'm gonna do. <laughs> This is something 
you might do uh, in the game if a starbase stands in your way and you're running out of time, but otherwise it's a really stupid thing to do. You can destroy a starbase with a photon torpedo. <laughs> so, Starfleet Command reviewing your record to consider court martial. <laughs> So at that point, I'm going to exit the game. And uh, so you get the idea. So There were six Klingon battlecruisers left at the end of your mission. Uh, your fitness rating is 79. Press any key to begin the game. There's the Star Trek game. <laughs>